Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Lisa's Love and Light. Thank you all for being here today uh, on this day after Thanksgiving. How is everyone doing? I hope everything is going well and everyone is doing well. Um, I'm glad to be off so that I can get some rest. And um, it's a good day. So how was everyone's Thanksgiving? I'm pretty sure you guys are still in the middle of it. You know, you're not just celebrating yesterday. You probably have today off as well. So enjoy whatever you're doing. I had a chance to watch some of the movies that I recorded and uh, didn't get a chance. It, it, it just feels good to be off and relax because I sometimes have a problem relaxing you know, because I work a lot, but it's, like I said, it's good to be off and I hope you guys are doing well. And I decided to come on here today to talk to you guys and to do a video. This video today is going to be a little different. And I kind of hesitated at first about it. And I just, you know, I have to like, sometimes before I come on, I listen to music, you know, because it gives me the uh, courage that I need to do what I need to do. And also prayer as well. So the combination of both helps a lot. So when I say this video is gonna be a little different today, it's gonna be a little difficult for me to talk about certain things, but it's important because as I talk about things, it doesn't have a chokehold on me or my life anymore you know, things that make me uncomfortable, things that I was struggling with, you know, and when I talk about it, it releases it, you know, release it to the universe. And then I can move on. But when you don't talk about things, or when I don't talk about things that really disturb my spirit, then I stay in a place of stagnation. And I don't want that. So little by little, as I take these steps to venture out, you know, I release things as I speak them out without giving specific information, but just speaking about things that have affected my life. Not only is it going to release that chokehold that I feel, but it's going to help other people as well, because there are people who are listening to this channel, who I don't know, and they don't know me, and they're suffering from some sort of grief, pain, and despair. And as they hear things that effectively help me as I go, go through the grief, and, you know, it was very new back um, in 2020, but now, you know, as I take steps to help myself heal and, and do therapy and et cetera, it gets better. So, you know, everything I talk about here is going to help someone. And I know it's helping people because I had a conversation the other day with someone who watched this channel faithfully. And he told me to never stop doing what I'm doing because it's helping so many people. And what I learned is that he's been sharing this channel with other people as well. And he really emphasized to me how much is helping people. I had no intentions of stopping, but what I do here on this channel for the newcomers is, you know, I'm talking to the new people who are here for the first time. I'm not a licensed therapist. I don't have a degree in social work or therapy. Um, however, I am speaking from my own personal experiences and I'm speaking from a place where I was so low to the ground, you couldn't get any lower, you know? And, and I talk about some ways how I was lifted up and how I got through it. And, and I'm going to talk about some things here today that's a little different. It is about healing, but some people don't know what I've really gone through. You know, I've heard in the past, oh, your life is sweet and calm. No, it has never been that. I had to crawl, bite, and chew my way back to have peace, you know? And not only by myself, I wouldn't have been able to do this, but with the help of God. So the title of this topic of discussion today is When the Walls Are Closing In, Learn How to Heal. 
because sometimes life can get overwhelming to the point it feels like this, like the walls are closing in. And we are in the middle of that and we don't know how to stop that. We're going to talk about that. But before we get into the topic today, um, I went to the doctor on Tuesday. I just want to say this and really wanted to cancel the appointment because, you know, it's right before the holiday, but I know that I had already rescheduled. And talking with my doctor and we were talking about weight, et cetera, and food. And guys, as you know, I love food, you know, especially good food. And I've cooked during the holidays. So, you know, but the good news is, is that I didn't gain too much weight as <laughs> so far. And we talked about something that my doctor wanted me to do, which was difficult, but I'm doing it. And that was to get myself from five cups of coffee a day down to two. And I'm doing that. It's difficult because, you know, I drink coffee because I get up early in the morning. And besides my day job, I have a job in the afternoon that I work for myself doing things, you know. And so that takes my time, too. So coffee, you know. But what I started doing is drinking some tea, you know, which helps a lot instead of doing a coffee and a caffeine because she's telling me that it's not good to have all of that. So I did get myself down to two cups and then in between I drink uh, green tea. So that helps a lot. So let's get into this topic today. I hope everyone is doing well, enjoying the holidays. And if you are listening to my channel, I hope these messages are helping you. So what I want to talk about today, bear with me because some of it is difficult. But it needs, I need to talk about it without giving specific information because, as I said, um, as I talk about these things, it's part of my healing process and it, does, it no longer has a chokehold on me. First of all, I want to talk about, because I have some notes here so I don't forget anything, it's just the fake world we live in today. What is this thing about fakeness today? Fake love fake kisses, fake friends, fake everything it seems today that goes on in this world. If I can't have real love, I don't want fake love. <laughs> I don't want any of that, anything fake, you know? I. It's important for me to be my authentic self. And people, some people don't seem to like that, but it can't be any other way for me because as I heal and I get better, I start to love on myself and I start to be my authentic self, something that I couldn't do before, you know, but I'm doing it now. And it's important as I do this, you know, that I take the steps to heal. And as I heal, healing is growth, you know, and just staying in a place of fakeness. I, I don't want that. But I have to mention that because everything, you know, seem to be going in that direction in this world today. So, so that's why I spend a lot of time just, I don't have a lot of friends, et cetera, because, et cetera, because I just don't like the fakeness and I, you know, take my time with everything that I do. So uh, getting into this topic. Okay. I have notes here. So bear with me guys, because I don't want to forget about things that I need to talk about here. So what I have learned so far on this path and purpose is what I'm talking about today. It is important for me to speak out my truth so that the past cannot put a chokehold on my future. That's so important to me because if I'm, you know, not speaking out truths and those truths have stagnated my life and if I just keep it within, it's going to continue to create stagnation. So once I speak it out, I can release it, give it to God, the universe, and then I can continue to move on, you know, move on this path. Um, so I want to tell you guys a story that took place on Thanksgiving Day. So I, from the time I was 14 years old, and I'm not going to give any names, locations, etc., I'm just going to talk. Um, I had 
from the time I was 14, I had a friend who's a somewhat older than me. And we were good friends, best friends. I knew her kids from the time they were born. And, um, you know, she has four kids and I, I knew them. I know her whole family. She knows my whole, I know some of her family. She knows my entire family. And we were like sisters, you know, from the time I was 14. Um, and I remember one of her sons when he was born that uh, I helped, he was like four months old or so, and I held him in my arms. I used to babysit for her a lot when she went out and stuff. And we were just really good friends. She also lived in the same building that I lived in. And um, so I'm talking about this because her son, you know, when I was 23, we, we stopped being friends. I'm gonna talk about that too. Um, her son, I have uh, stayed in contact with, and he's grown up to be such a wonderful young man with a family of his own now. And I can remember when he was only four months old. And he was proactive in getting us to reconcile. And that's very commendable because he wanted me and his mom, because he know because I was in their life all the time, you know? And they were kids and um, it, he has a sister too. And I've been in their life forever. So he was proactive. I actually never thought that we were ever reconciled because, and the reason is because organized religion stood between us. And I'm going to talk about that. Um, and that's why we separated, you know, because we grew up in the same uh, religious um, setting. And um, when I was 23, I came out of it. But before I get to that story, so her son, one of her sons, he was proactive in trying to get us, you know, to reconcile. And I'm like, man, he keeps talking about this and he keeps trying and trying. He's been trying this for a few years. And finally, he succeeded because um, he finally uh, sent me a message that his mom wanted to talk to me. And, you know, I gave my number and she contacted me and I haven't spoken to her since I was 23 years old. I'm now in my fifties. And it, it felt so good to talk to her and to, we were on the phone for, I don't know, hours, just catching up on things. And I, I and I contacted him and said, "You succeeded. I, I, I you know, really impressive. Very because he was determined that we were going to be in each other's life because we, you know, I've been there with her during the good times, bad times, and vice versa. She's like family to me. And so, um, you know, one of the reasons why we, you know, uh." We're not friends anymore because at the age of 23, right? And when you grow up in an organized religious setting, a strict one, from the time that you're a child, from the time that I was a minor child from an age of six up until 23, you don't have a choice. You know, if that's what your family is doing, this is how it is. And so at the, and it was so stressful for me because I did try to um, live by the rules and regulations, but everything was so structured, not just structured, but to me, controlling every aspect of my life. And at the age of 23, um, I, I used to model everyone. I went to modeling school and I paid my way through modeling school and something that you know, was not approved of, but I was living at home with my mother. And um, while I was modeling, you know, all of this, I'm not going to go deep into this, but all of this occurred because I was excommunicated at the age of 23 from that uh, religious organization due to forbidden love. And, and that's the way I'm going to say that. I'm not going to get deep into that, but because I met someone, they were not part of the organization, 
you know, it was considered, I'm going to say it was considered forbidden love because I don't see it that way. But anyway, I went and, and told someone about the situation, someone who I trusted within the organization who I actually, who actually babysitted me when I was a child, my mom went to work and that person went and told the elders of that, of the uh, religious setting. And so I had to sit down with them, you know, and what happened is that I'm thinking I'm going to get reprimanded from the Bible because they had the Bible with them, et cetera. But the Bible quickly went under the chair and they were asking me questions that I wouldn't even ask my own child, you know, intimate questions and things of that nature. And I was, I was horrified, you know, because I didn't expect that. And also I was living in my mother's home and my mother at the time um, had a weekly Bible study um, being conducted in her home. So you can imagine how I felt I'm being, I didn't feel like it was being, uh, I was being questioned, but I felt like I was being interrogated with, with questions that I wouldn't even ask my own child. And that's how I'm going to say that by two to three men of the organization who have prominent positions there. And I'm going to talk about this. You know, some people would be afraid to talk about it but it's going to be freeing for me to talk about it. And like I said, on this channel, I don't give specific names, you know, and places and et cetera, because that's not the purpose of this. Um, the purpose is for me to share, to help somebody else so that they can just, you know, know that some of the ways that it helps me to heal and they can heal from certain things in their own life as well. So I, I sat with these men and I was terrified because um, any form of like excommunication or anything and, I, and I'm in my mother's house, I have to move. And my parents were not together. They were separated. And my so I did this line of questioning went on for weeks because I was trying to not prevent myself from getting excommunicated. And yet the relationship that I was in um, at that time that they considered a forbidden one, I, I couldn't do anything about it. So it just continued. I, I'm going to say it like this, that it started off as a friendship and it ended up in something that I didn't expect. And um, it just, you know, this person's not part of the organization as well. And it, it was just horrific for me. And finally, I um, said that they can do whatever they want. And what I did is went to my father and told my father about what was going on. He was furious. And he said, I wouldn't even sit with you and ask you these specific questions because it was an interrogation. And um, he... And I told him my mother is going to make me leave because she has a weekly Bible study in her house and she's not going to give that up because of what I got going on. So um, it got to the point where I had to go live with my dad for a little while. And that's when me and my best friend got separated because what happened is that here's what they like to do. They will read your name out that you are no longer a member of the organization and that you're being excommunicated right during the week and then on sunday they give a sermon about what you did they don't use your name or specifics they just give a sermon about that particular situation you know like for example if um someone goes out and be intimate with someone that they're not married to and she happens to get pregnant and she gets excommunicated, right, during the week. On Sunday, they're going to give a sermon on, I don't know if it's adultery or fornication, and then some say something about a pregnancy without using a person's name. But you already put one and one is two because that person just got excommunicated on a Wednesday or Thursday night, and Sunday they give a sermon about it. 
So you can imagine how I felt about, you know, what they were going to do. But I, you know, had to just, I could not succumb to what they wanted me to do. Because before this event, I was always like getting into some kind of uh, discussion with them because I, I couldn't follow the rules and regulations because I talked to outsiders. I was I had friends that were outside the organization that certain things you can't do. And it was just difficult for me because I was just being me. And that wasn't acceptable. So what happened, I'm telling the story because what happened is that I had to go to my father and talk with him and my father. You know, I had to leave my mother's house. I had to move. And so I moved in with my father temporarily. He found me a studio apartment, helped me get there. And I think he paid my rent for a little while. I was working, but he was helping. And he was, my father, you know, for a man who, you know, just was stubborn in some of his way of thinking and stuff, my father really was there for me because he was really angry with my mother for the fact that these people were allowed to interrogate me in this manner, you know? So um, he, he just went forward to helping me. And um, he was actually concerned about me too, because once you, let me explain it to you this way. Once you get read out, you're excommunicated. Everything that I knew from the time I was six years old and everyone that I knew and grew up with and, and, and spent time with, it was no more. Because when you're excommunicated, your name is read out, you're shunned from that day forward for the rest of your life unless you come back and return. And in order to return, you have to be in an organization a year and then you have to write to the headquarters saying that you repented of whatever. And, you know, for me, I was being my authentic self. That's all I'm going to say about that. And there was no way that I was going to turn myself inside and out like a pretzel just to walk in a way that an organization think I should. So I had a nervous breakdown at the age of 23. And I'm going to talk about it here because it was too much. That's all I knew all my life, you know, and. In a way, it's like being, you know how, uh, uh, how do you say, Amish people. And that person is no longer part of it. They lose everything, their family, you know, everything that they know. So that's what was going on with me. I lost all my family, I, uh, friends that I knew from the time I was six and seven, everything because of it. And I had a breakdown. My father took me to the hospital. And I spent three months in the hospital. And I don't have any shame to this. At first I did years ago, but someone needs to hear this because, you know, I'm being my authentic self. I spent three months there. No one came to see me but my father. And he was there and he was very proactive in helping me to get better. And he would come over after work, made sure that I have food in the house. He would even cook because my father liked to cook and he would come over, stay, you know, leave and go to work from there. And he would cook for me and help me when I came back. Cause I, I was a mess and slowly I started to get better. You know, it, it took a while because I lost everything and I had to build all over again, you know, but I have to speak out my truth here and when you are excommunicated, you know, what they teach is that you're spiritually dead and et cetera. And I used to believe that. And talking about not having self-love for myself, I used to think for a while I was this slow person because of et cetera and so forth. And I believed that because that's all I knew, you know? And, 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 and to be honest with you guys as well, if my mom was still alive, I don't even know if I could do this video and talk about these things because this was just the way she felt knowing that this was going to happen because she had asked me um, about meeting with the elders and I told her yes. 
And then she asked if they were going to excommunicate me. And I wasn't going to lie to her. Yes, they're going to, you know, they're going to do it, you know, whatever week it was. And, you know, she's got to sit there and listen to that, you know, and it was difficult, but the way things took place, I felt, oh my God, I would never do that to anyone. Like the interrogation and what went on there, but no one believed me when I was telling them that this is how this went down. And, and I'm telling the truth and they just didn't, you know, believe me. So I lost everything and I had to build myself up again. You know, I didn't plan for any of this to happen or whatever. It just did. And um, I had to move forward with my life. And I, I give a lot of gratitude to not just God, but to my father, because he was there to help me. Just imagine going through something like this and losing everything and everybody and there's no one there to help you. So my father did everything to help me. You know, I went to work after I came out of the hospital. I was better and he helped me with everything. You know, I had to um, move forward with my life. So this is my story. I'm moving. I'm looking at the notes I have here because I don't want to forget um, everything I need to say here. But um, I lost contact with my best friend. And she was my best friend because of it. You know, everybody uh, just... And then I used to see people because I lived in a... Not far from the area. And I used to run into people. And they used to look at me like I was scum of the earth. You know, because I was excommunicated. And to this day, I I'm still am. This is why I'm... I, I'm very spiritual person. I believe in God. I have a, a relationship with God, very close relationship with God, you know, and I don't get into organized religion. I go to church. I don't go every week, but I do go, but I'm not going to allow myself to ever get, um, like become a member of an organized religion. You know, that's just me. But I believe in God, but I'm more spiritual than anything. You know, um, so they excommunicated me and, you know, hold on, everyone. I'm just reading what I wrote here because I stayed up late last night writing this. You know, and as everything went on in my life that way, the walls felt like it was closing in because they teach that when you leave them, your world fall apart, everything falls apart. And for a while it did because I had to learn how to love me, how to take care of me and to restore my relationship with God. I didn't know how to do any of that. And I, and to be even more honest with you, I went through a, a long period, maybe 10 years, 15 years, of just trying to find out who I am and trying to fit in into a society, you know, that didn't really seem like I fit in because I always marched to the beat of a different drum. And even when I was part of the organization, I always asked questions about certain things that, you know, they didn't like, you know, just do what you're told to do and that's it. And I've never been that kind of person. And so it just, it just, you know, I was just always getting into something. And then eventually, you know, I got thrown out. And I knew at that point I wasn't going back. And um, so my, after, I'm going to talk about how I got from being down and out to where I am today. So I had to keep learning lessons because I kept allowing relationships, getting into relationships with narcissistic individuals and with people. Because at first, to be quite honest, I felt like that's what I deserve because I'm not, you know, because now I'm ousted out of a religion, you know, that. And then I felt like I disappointed my mom and, 
et cetera. And so I kind of like drifted off into these relationships, these narcissistic relationships with people who I should have never been with. But you know what? Lessons have been learned. And I was repeating lessons. And sometimes when you repeat lessons, I swear they're worse the second or third time around than they are the first time. And it took me a while to learn that until the year 2020. That's when I started to get on this path to heal because everything fell apart. You know how Job in a Bible was down? I mean, he was down to the ground with zero where he lost everything. And that's where I was in 2020 you know, losing everything, 10 people at one time, like a domino effect from my mom, my dog, my friend, you know, people from church and, and people I knew from years ago. And it was just going on and on and on. And then, you know, it just, just, you know, where I was so low, you can't get any lower. And I was, I started praying to God, asking him to help me, help me because a part of me said, I can't do this anymore. And but what I did, I had these arguments and fights with God, you know, raging prayer arguments or whatever. And then one day I woke up and um, I was tired, exhausted, and I started talking to God to please help me. And I made a vow, two vows to God, which I do to this very day. If you help me with all everything I'm going through and what's happening and etc., you know. And he did. He helped me. And as I went through it, you know, and as I made those vows and, and, and you know, God helped me. He lifted me from the ashes and the dirt and from everything as low as you can get. And he lifted me up out of that. And, you know, he, you know, it's like being a testimony to help people today, you know, because I couldn't do it by myself. And it was God who helped me to get out of it. And it doesn't matter what other people think, et cetera, because the story I'm telling is real. The testimony that I'm sharing is real because there was no way that I was getting up without God, you know, because I was just actually saying, God, this is it, you know. And he's like, no, this is not it. You got to you got to do the work. You got to get up and do. And I started to do therapy and. I started to work on myself. And as I started to do this, it wasn't easy. I cried all the time, was in a fetal position. And 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 one of the things people, as I was going through this grief and stuff, God was showing me the people who were adding more grief to it, the people in my life, the betrayals that was taking place. And, and then I started to have proof of these betrayals. I'm already down and hurting to the ground. And then somebody else come in to make more pain no, you're not. No, you're not. I had to learn how to cut off, block, and delete. And that was hard for me. I was scared because, you know, these are people that I bonded with and thought were my friends and who had my back. These people didn't have my back. They were behind my back doing betrayals. And as I found out about it, I have I had to cut off, block, and delete. And it wasn't easy. But as I start to do the work, you know, and go into prayer and listen to music, I started to take care of my health, take care of me. And then I learned to start to love on myself. I am worth it. You know, it doesn't matter what other people say. Haters are always going to be around you when you're trying to work on yourself and do better. Because some people are going to cheer you on to do better and other people are going to hate on you. Expect haters and anything that you do that where you are experiencing growth and healing expect the haters, you know, don't allow yourself to get caught up in what they're saying, you know, because these haters do not understand is that when you make a vow, like myself, made, I made vows to God, and you put God in everything that you do, God is going to have your back, no doubt, you know, and my thing is, you know, if God is with me, then who can be against me? They can do whatever they want behind the scenes. All I have to do is give it to God and say, this is too heavy. I can't handle this, God. And give it to him and keep moving, keep working, keep doing what I'm doing. And keep making sure that I honor those vows that I said, which I have been doing. 
And God has showed me because of it over and over and over again that he has my back. And, and there were situations that took place where my back was up against the wall. And I prayed asking God to help and God came on through. And what I'm telling you is the truth. And he come on through time and time and time again, you know, because I matter. You matter as well. The work is not easy. Believe me, because you got to look in a mirror and look at yourself and, and, and you got to know you got to love on yourself, because if you don't love yourself, none of this that I'm talking about is going to work, you know, loving yourself and, and keep moving, keep going, even though it's hard. Even if you could take one step a day, take that step. It's better than no steps at all, because that one step eventually is going to turn into two three and four. And then one day you're going to get up and you're going to feel better and you're going to start loving yourself. And it's worth it people, because as you start to love yourself, you're not going to put up with stuff. I was allowing myself to stay in toxic relationships where people who were just, just talking, you know, verbalize, like, how do I say this? They were just so toxic that they were just, um, verbally abusive, you know, and just, you know, you can't get any lower to the ground from dealing with toxic, narcissistic individuals. And it was hard for me to leave those relationships. But the Lisa I am today, when, when people, haters from the past and, you know, people who've been blocked, cut off, deleted, oh yeah, we're going to do this and that. I'm not the same Lisa Vaughn that you knew. And even exes, you know, one of my exes contacted me for a reconciliation. I just ignored it. I'm not the same person. Let's say, for example, I did reconcile with someone from my past. It would never work because vinegar and oil don't mix because I'm not the same Lisa Vaughn. What I tolerated then, I, I don't tolerate today because I'm going to speak it out. I'm going to tell you how I feel. Whereas the old Lisa would be sad, depressed, and scared to say what she had to say this Lisa who I am today is not putting up with it it doesn't matter whether it's family friends x this x that I'm not dealing with it. I'm gonna say how I feel we're gonna have a conversation talk about it I you know I'm gonna hear what you have to say too because it's not one-sided you know it's a two-way street and if it continues to be toxic I'm gonna cut off block and delete recently I saw someone who I cut off right? Because of toxicity. They were looking at me like they wanted to go at it physically. And I just looked at her, girl, please, you know, my attitude. And I just keep going because I don't have time for toxicity. You know, I've been at a low place where no one was there to help me but God, you know, now I'm in a space where God has risen, you know, helped me to get up and, and to do better. And as I do better, one of the things that I said to God that I will have be a testimony and a blessing to other people who are in despair, who are in grief and pain, and they don't know what to do to help themselves. And this is why I always talk about therapy, you know, because I'm not a licensed therapist of, at all, but I do grief therapy weekly with my therapist. And it's important that I continue in that space. Because when you speak out things of pain and hurt, it doesn't have a chokehold on you anymore. But if you keep it to yourself, because if you grew up like I did, what goes on in this house stays in this house. If you don't speak that out, then it stays right there. And you stay stagnated, broken down, busted, and disgusted. And that's not the place that I want to be or where God wants me to be. And I am talking about these things because as I talk about it and release it to God, I don't have to deal with it anymore. Because if you give it to God, he's going to do the rest. If you genuinely doing your part as you pray to God, you're not out here setting people up for failure, hurting people behind the scenes and trying to do the most and the worst, then God is going to hear that prayer and help you as you help yourself. You know, this is not a genie in a bottle situation. You know, God will help you as you help yourself and put forth the effort. I used to always worry about what people would think and say and et cetera. As I do the work and continue to do it, I don't worry about that. I stay focused and keep going. 
the purpose of this channel is to help other people because sometimes people are suffering so bad with their grief and pain and not just grief of the loss of loved ones but pain from things that they went through trauma and things like that and we need to heal those things because they will stay stagnated within us and then we can't grow from it we can't expand we can't heal and people who don't want to see me heal that's why I cut off, block, and delete. I have no contact with them. And if they contact me, I don't respond because that's the old Lisa. I have evolved into a new individual. I am Lisa Vaughn, yes, but I'm not that old Lisa who's going to let people ride my coattail and use me and abuse me. I'm not that person anymore, and I won't put up with that. You know, I'll just cut people off. And if they're determined to do things, then I do what's necessary you know, to, to get that person off my back because, you know, it takes an equal give and take to people. And if I don't want something and somebody want it, they got to go because I'm not interested, you know, and that bullying and, and that stuff is not going to work anymore, you know, and the old version of myself has evolved into this new person. When you start to love you, and, and realize that you matter, nobody can change that. And you start to heal and do the work, nobody can change it, you know? And you start to feel better, you do better. And then one day you'll be a testimony to other people, you know, paying it forward, turning, we're gonna learn here on this channel how to turn pain into power, power into a purpose and purpose into paying it forward to help other people who are feeling broken down and, and hurt and in pain and they feel hopeless. So someone please share this video. I know it's kind of long, but please share it because it's going to help somebody who's someplace in pain and, and grief and despair. And they need to be lifted up and they need to know, learn how to heal and love one themselves. Because as you love yourself, you know, you're not going to let people do any and everything. And, and what I say also, God is navigating this ship that I'm on. So people can say A, B, C, and D, but if God is for you, then, then, you know, then who can be against you? That's the message here today. You know, peace, you know, and make sure that you try to limit as much toxicity from your life as much as you can. Because peace is better. Peace is definitely better. You know, and I say that to have peace, even if I have to spend time alone for now, you know, and, and just continue to work on myself, you know, that, that's important to me to be the best version of myself and to have peace. It's better to be in peace instead of pieces, you know, so let's continue to do the work, subscribe to the channel hit that like button, tell me what you want to hear and continue to share the video because, you know, somewhere you're sharing with somebody who really needs to hear that message. So that's my story today, you know, and you guys go and enjoy the rest of your um, Thanksgiving. I will be back on Monday and I'll be back with a new message for you. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. And before I go, I want to say I'm glad that I was able to restore my friendship with my best friend who I've known all my life. And, you know, it was really, really, it just really was good to talk to her. And we talked so much about things like we're catching up with all these years. And um, thank you again, her son, who I'm not going to mention his name. And thank you for his proactive for your proactive effort in all of this. So that's it today, guys. This is Lisa always sharing love and light and encouraging you to be the best version of yourself that you can be. Thank you. And I'll see you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.